What's up, my little gravy babies? My yeah. little gravy biscuits, gravy ladles, little gravy biscuit bows. bitches. Oh, Hi, shady guys. gravy. That's what I'm calling DJ. <laughs> oh, shady gravy, wavy gravy, wavy gravy. That was a that was a probably a nightmarish dude that we pumped up into cultural like. I kind of class, you know what I mean? I like kind of class them. There's a the man actually movie named movie Wavy that. Gravy? Y'all know about Wavy Gravy? What y'all, y'all know nothing about it. Uh, Woodstock. Here, is that that rapper? No, it was a, no, but there is a Gravy Baby rapper who's got like 3.1 million views on all his rapping videos. Oh, shit. I don't think that's yeah. Gravy Baby. Yeah, it's his name. It's Young, Young Gravy. gravy. Wavy. wavy Gravy was a hippie. He was real, he got, I remember him from Woodstock, uh, uh, but he did a whole bunch right. of stuff. Right. Yeah, I, I just said that's right. Yeah, yeah, it's probably so he, a real. So he's an old hippie. What about old... him from Woodstock? What makes him significant? Yeah, he was just he was an icon of time. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I, I and it, I'm not necessarily sure exactly what he was, other than just a dude who was around. I know he did some like cooking with. Uh, oh, he sounds rad, actually. I mean, obviously, maybe he wrote his own bio, but this sounds kind of rad. Do you want to hear it? Yeah, let's hear it. Well, his last name's Romney. Right off the jump, I don't trust it. DJ's yeah. got me convinced everyone's an op, but uh, <laughs> he co-founded yeah. several organizations, including the activist commune, the Hog Farm, and then later as Wavy Gravy. Camp Winter Rainbow and the Siva Foundation. He founded the First Church of Fun with PHs, a secret society of comics and clowns aimed to support the ending of the Vietnam War through political theater. That sounds lame now, but they didn't know any better then. They thought that would work. Um, I mean, it's like the Merry Pranksters. It's like, uh, yeah. Yeah. People, but like all those people. Huh? I was just going to say that there there was a big movement where people like were believed that art could make change. And I, you know, to an extent, I think it can. Um, but I mean, it was through entertainment and stuff like that it doesn't always seem to have the same kind of effect. It, in, in hindsight, it always seems silly. But I think at the time when you're like, this is this is what we do. We might as well do it with our with what we think is right too if that makes sense oh he also he did the nobody for president campaign in 1980 with other anarchists to promote the option of none of the above for president i mean i think he's just yeah he sounds like he's just like a true jester mm -hmm. yeah i'm sure so he was friends with ram Dass. yeah there you go there's a lot of a lot of a lot of exos a lot of red flags tom <laughs> dj had a lot of ram Dass. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like any Westerner who comes over here, especially if it's a Westerner with like who's got like a whole bunch of money trying to tell people that fucking materials don't matter and they you know, they've had the time and the and the I, I just I don't I don't trust them. I'm trying to use like some sort of Eastern mysticism to convince Western people that, you know what I'm saying, that there is some I just, no, I don't trust that. And you can and you can learn more. This book is only eight ninety nine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Are you talking about when people like you talking about the the eat pray love complex where a white lady goes to Singapore or some shit and then she comes back yeah, wearing yeah. wispy well, material? Talking about the '60s when people like came back from studying oh. gurus over there and then they were like, "Hey, cast off all your material possessions, you fucking losers!" And I think DJ's point is a lot of them like, "Yeah, you your parents gave you the home that they that you were born in. <laughs> like, yeah. it's super easy. Yeah, for dude. You. Yeah, it's great for you to." preach all this stuff about, you know, all this other stuff. You're not having to live, you know what I'm saying, in this in this society, you know, anyway. I think this sounds just, like my yeah. minimalism bit is what it sounds like, that minimalism is a rich bitch idea because you have enough money to rebuy all that shit once you're tired of your mansion looking like my studio apartment. You're right. I mean, I mean, yeah, it's very much like that. You've reached some sort of, uh, uh, some sort of, uh, intellectual fucking enlightenment you know what i'm mm. saying because you've had billions of dollars to not have to do anything but go sit in a fucking goddamn a temple I don't know, yeah you know, what are you the fucking beatles want. you wouldn't go yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Ram Dass did hang out with the beatles 
So yeah, like, I yes. just, yeah. Fuck that shit. I'm not listening. Uh, and then and all these gurus that come over here from there, like the majority of them are just are end up being like massive rapists and fucking and and thieves and fucking it's the whole. It, you just can't trust them. Is all I'm saying. Mm. So I don't trust that. I'm not even wavy gravy. <laughs> I think I trust. I think I trust wavy because he did all that and seems like he's still like living in the woods you know he's commit like to the that, bit that's all i want is somebody commit to the bit man well it's also like it depends on like what you're asking me it's like do i think ram das is uh should be a religious leader no i mean andy and i have had many discussions about it because she reads a lot of his stuff and you know it it's, finds it compelling mm -hmm. um but at the same time it's like well what do i want rich kids to do <laughs> i'd rather him do that than fucking go to wall street dog like it seems to me like He's a mediocre guy with a big ego. And I'll grant you that with a huge ego. Yeah. Um, because there's no rape allegations that I know of against Ram Das. Now, you know, DJ's also alluding to because that was like that was like a what is the word I'm looking for? That was like a genre of entertainer or whatever you want to call it for a while. Like a major one. It still exists, but there were many of those types of dudes. You talking about like Huxley? I mean you talking about going into like motivational yeah, well, speakers and shit like that? Like and they would resent you saying that. Yeah. But yes, I mean guru yes, is that's what like they are. Yeah. Only catch all term I can think of is guru, which I know is like priest in another language, but our version of the word is you know how like gypsy means a thing to us that doesn't mean what it used to mean now, like in vernacular. Mm -hmm. Whatever like guru means now is the only catch all term I can think of. Some of them were hippy dippy. Some of them were a lot more Machiavellian, but it was like, it was like, it seems to me like around the time of the 60s and 70s and enlightenment and drugs mm -hmm. and people's brains were expanding. There were a lot of mostly men being like, I have the answer. Right. And a lot of that shit was super compelling. And a lot of them, I think, were decent people, but a lot of them weren't. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah. Uh, I mean, a, a Guru, it, to me, just gets closer and closer to cult leaders. So it's like, I think as long as you stay stay in your lane and don't start trying to, make, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, be right. nefarious, it just like because a lot of it was that was a big the peace big peace movement. So everybody was trying to like their version of it, their version of acid and and uh, mushrooms being like, oh fuck, we're all the same. We're all, it's all it all stems back to fucking Joseph Campbell. It all stems back to all that we're all connected and all of that shit. So it's like at the same time. It's like okay, you're all you got, you're all saying the same thing. Just some of you have bigger egos about it than others, and you think it's you personally as opposed to the concept, yeah. which is all of ours. You think yeah, you yeah. discovered and, it, but you're just feeling the same thing people have felt forever. Yeah, yeah. Bill Hooks has the most interesting take on on uh, Joseph Campbell and that whole stuff, and mm. I would just encourage people to read it instead of hearing. Yeah. A wide dude. Who's... <laughs> Just get him fuck it up. <laughs> read him. Well, read well in college, they didn't teach me a fucking bell hooks. They taught me Joseph I think I think at the heart of all of that is it's so inner focused and everybody needs to spend some time on who they are and what they want and blah blah blah. Hmm. But um and anytime you dive into those cats, it seems to me uh, there's like a lack of like everyone else. It's like, man, you really spent your whole life to tell people to do what they wanted. Like, there's not a single passage about how important it is to like go work in your community. You know, mm. <laughs> it's just, yeah, yeah man, uh, yeah, man. Yeah, dude, it's a it's a total it's a total fucking it's a I don't know, man. It's, it's people with enough money to go spend fucking years in Nepal and come back and act like you know what I'm saying it's crazy. It's no different than a dude who does mushrooms a few times and feels like you know what I'm saying he uh, obliterated his ego, but now he's better than you. Yep. Yeah, it's like I think you missed the point. I think you missed yeah, the mark a little bit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rumba yeah, says, "I've released my karmic chains. I'm 
<laughs> then, like, later, they know, what the fuck? Yeah. Ramdas has this speech. I don't know if this is what it's called, but the theme of it is like, is teaching, like being a teacher. Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm not, a, I, I'm not a guru. I'm trying to be a teacher and I don't know if I reach that. Mm-hmm. And I think the, I think the content of that speech is genuinely very beautiful. Uh, it's like really hard for me to grant him the notion that he reached it with it's like you know again mm-hmm. when he's like the, the Ron Dust Foundation owns this giant fucking mansion in Hawaii which is right. literally colonial as you know what I mean it's yeah, like I okay reach. well what the fuck but my point is um I I'm, I've always felt like uh well again it's like somebody with an ego that big and a brain that works at that high level these are clearly smart people yeah, I, I prefer wavy gravy over the guy who's in the CIA. I guess that's all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, exactly, exactly. Well, to me, they they always and, seemed like uh, like gurus and all those were like uh, work from the individual, like it was like working on oneself. Yes. And then you, when you get like religion and and religious leaders and stuff like that, it's supposed it was supposed to be the element of community and all that stuff. And you, you're you as an individual of a larger group. So I feel like they were both just focused on different things, but both of them essentially, if you take all of the the altruistic version of religion and the altruistic version of people like these gurus with the, with the message that they're sending, it's still just uh work on oneself and then work on you are being the part of, of, of a community um, and trying to do what's best for each other. Uh, but obviously because it was touched by human hands, uh, neither one of those things, I mean, they've all been corrupted. So. Sure. Yeah. hundred percent. I agree with that. Definitely. So, what have you guys been up to? <laughs> Dude, I just been sitting around journaling how I'm better than Ram Dass. Nice. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was I was writing down all the ways he thinks he's better than everybody, and then I was like, I don't do those things, and that. So you got ego death without the drugs. Fuck yeah, buddy. Dude, speaking Dude, of that's how they, Dude, but that's how they brainwashed. That's one of the right ways that they brainwashed. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously, he, DJ ascribes a sinisterism to it that I don't think I quite agree with. Go ahead. I just You're not telling me that bit in the whole Ram Dass Foundation is full of fucking spooks, dog. That oh now for it. sure. But he's been, incorporated he's been long it. dead though. Of course. Like anytime you build a thing, yeah, yeah. you're gonna lose control of it, get ousted or get murdered. So sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You could convince me they killed him if you want to, DJ. You just, I can give you five minutes research, come back, you can get me in 30 seconds. They killed Ram Dass, you know what I mean? I'd be, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. Yeah, well, what's you know. Been, what's been gravy with you guys this week? Anybody got anything? Man, I got just dumped on by the universe in mild, like totally manageable ways all weekend. So, so you like know, mild inconveniences that all piled up to make you mad. I got like stranded in Nashville because my car died and it ended up not being a big deal. But for a hot minute, me and the quasi mechanic that I had working on, my, <laughs> it was a whole thing. Um, it ended up not being a big deal. And then, and, but also, all right, here's what's crazy. Cause then this is true. And I, I was thinking of this before I ended up like staying with my buddy, uh, who's getting, who's been sober for uh, about a year now. Mm-hmm. And I have seen him since him getting sober. Like we've had dinner and stuff, but I went to his house. Uh, I went to him to like in a like a weekend event. Two of two of them with other sober. Yeah. My point is, it was just like really beautiful to see a friend that you kind of knew as one person who has completely clawed his way into being another person. Yeah. Cool. And you know what? Circling back, I think that's what that shit's for. That like inner stuff is like you got to go in there and deal with it and then you got to go into the world and do something outside of yourself and he's in that place he's like really involved in the sober community uh it was just really nice to um yeah just be around an old friend who's a completely new person yeah to witness awesome, change man. witnessing change is always fucking sick dude well, and we've been friends forever, so it, for me, it was I've, I saw him slowly devolve into madness, and then I watched him, honestly, comparatively, quite quickly, quickly climb out of it. 
or yeah, start right. to, I guess we should say start to climb out of it. That's right. I mean, what's cool about that, well, what's, what's cool about being fr- what, friends with people who are willing to go into the madness, i.e., I don't know, all three of us, is <laughs> there is a cooler story that comes out of it as opposed to people like, yeah. you know, people that never smoked, never drank, never did anything. There, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I just think to me, the story is more compelling if you do, because then you have some sort of adversity to overcome. I mean, DJ is another perfect example of that. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's beautiful. Well, depth, you're talking about depth. DJ is mm-hmm. one of the deepest people I know and, yeah. and my buddy. I won't say his name because, you know, like he won't mind. But at the same time, it's like there's an ethos in NA and an AA, like the anonymous part. Mm-hmm. But like um, he's a very deep person. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, yeah, it was just really good to hang out with. And he had my back. That was the other thing. He drove like a fucking hour. He hung out with me. Then he drove me back to his house. And he fed me, and then he drove me an hour back to the car, and then he hung out with me. And yeah, you were reminded that people. you were loved. <laughs> right, right. Well, and on that note, there's not many people I can even like allow to do that for me. Mm-hmm. It just, I just, I'd, I'd rather be here alone than feel so uncomfortable with this like acquaintance, you know, putting themselves out. Whereas with him, I was like, dog. You fleece me out of $500 so you could get meth one time. You're hanging out right here at this gas station exit. <laughs> well, in the steps terms, he's making amends. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> um, I get both sides. Because I, I definitely have felt that uncomfortability of somebody doing too much for you like a feel feeling like you're being indebted to someone so much it like it genuinely makes me anxious and uncomfortable um right. and it, i think that's probably because uh in a childhood situation you probably had to take care of yourself a little bit more than maybe you wanted to <laughs> so it, it is yeah. uncomfortable when other people do it yeah mark mark norman on his podcast when i used to listen to it years ago turned me on to the idea of uh kids of addicts become addicts or enablers mm-hmm. uh, who who can't allow any anyone to help them it's like I, so my brother was the addict and i was the person who was unable to accept help or whatever yeah um anyway hard same i'm i too was an enabler i would always yeah. do less slightly less drugs and slightly less drinking than everybody else so i can make sure everybody stayed alive so you could everybody yeah. could still do what they wanted but nobody got in trouble I still do that, but mm-hmm. now it's just so I can get the fuck out of here when it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> there is always a shift in the evening. I always call because when I worked yep. at the store, I, I could always feel it. It was always a re- in between 11 and 1 a.m. There, The energy at some point would shift and I would be like, now is the time to leave. Because if you stay yeah. later than now... It's going to get dark. weird. People are going to say shit that they don't mean. People are going to be out of pocket. Somebody's going to like think that they're you're going to get them because they're on, fucked up on a particular level that you might not be. And uh, there's going to be miscommunications that are going to happen that's going to end up in people getting their feelings hurt. So or you're going to do it. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. that's what that's what taught me to go home early was like, oh, man, I, I know how that came across. Uh, it was too much. Yeah. Yep. And also going back to the Ram Dass and Andy thing, she's always joking that she would have ended up in a cult had she not gotten with me young. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, and then I agree and I let her make that joke. My second thought is, yeah, or just like an addict, because there's definitely like been points in the night throughout our relationship where I'm like, yo, we got to. She's like, no. And I'm like, nah, we got it. We got to go. We're leaving. Yeah. We are leaving. <laughs> Now's the time. The witching hour yeah. has begun. <laughs> we must flee. Right. She's like, you don't like these people? I'm like, no, I love these people, and I want to keep it that way. Mm-hmm. So we got to get out of here. Mm-hmm. To maintain this, we have to not see all of it. You got you to gotta be blind to some of it to keep it I do done. think, do you guys agree with this? I do think there's finding people that you're like, yeah, I can, I can, I can get weird with you. I can get mm-hmm. fakely deep or actually deep. I don't mind you seeing that side of me. Mm-hmm. And honestly, for me, it's almost like I feel like I can think of a few people, just boom, 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 off the top of my head, where I'm like, yeah, because like 
you're not going to go too far for one. And then for two, you can't judge me. I've seen what you do. So I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to wake up in the morning ashamed of myself, but not in front of you, dog. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm ashamed for me, son. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I definitely think uh, if I if I had never found stand up, I definitely would have been in the in the drug world permanently. Um, one time I was hanging out um, with this dude who was a former heroin addict and we were talking and I just met him and it got deep real quick. Um, and at one point he was like, have you ever like felt disgusting, but felt comfortable in being disgusting? And I was like, oh, yeah, this is definitely a dude I would end up shacked in, shacked up within an abandoned house for like five days straight. <laughs> That's a good line, dude. <laughs> I know so many 26-year-olds that would work on this. Oh, of course. Well, I used to. They're probably 30 now, and I haven't seen them in years, but yeah. Right. <laughs> I was like, if I, if I would have been 10 years younger, that definitely would have absolutely worked. I definitely would have tried heroin tonight with you. You sound very fun. And interesting. Yeah. They got me hyped for a second. I was I thought you were like I thought this was a positive story. I was how tricked I was. I was like, oh yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. Uh he's great now. He's reformed. Uh again, change. It it is it is nice to see it. It is like it because that's that's the other thing too, especially if you partied at all when you were in your twenties seeing people grow up and become like this just happened i was talking to my, uh, this, my friend laura that i used to live with and like that used to be like a b bad blackout drunk like one i used to have to again make sure she didn't die on a regular basis she's completely sober now i don't think she even eats sugar like it's just a completely different person and yeah. it was like uh we, it was just it was like oh you, you used to do this and this and she's like well i don't remember any of that and i was like it makes sense that you don't remember yeah. that person, but there were parts of it that were cool. <laughs> Not saying you should go back by any means, but <laughs> we used to have fun at the Goodwill trying to find a cute purse. Oh, dude. I I had this thing. I had to check myself. So I didn't really party until my 30s. Mm. I, I think because like my brother was so messed up. I just was scared of all that. Yeah, they ruined it. Uh, yeah. But then I, I had this like run of meeting people either that I looked up to or that I knew just... I mean, I, I'm a few of them are musicians. I can think of a few other friends where I met them after they got sober. They've been sober about a year and I became friends with them. Mm. And I had to like check myself after I said to like the third one, I'm glad you're sober, but sounds like you were a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me the story. It's a pretty cool story. And then he's like, yeah, because you're talking to one of the best storytellers on earth. Mm -hmm. Right who has synthesized that time in their life through their art for so long that they're able to do this. And that mm -hmm. feels good in a way. And it's like yeah. a way to control it. But like, no, you don't. This is a vibrant, beautiful soul. Who's been through that. If you had met the yeah. man, you would have been like Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you would have laughed, yeah. but you would have been s scared for them at the same time. I would have had fun for three hours. Yes. And there's a person I can think of who's sober now who I met before she got sober and she was really fun one night till the end of the night. Yeah. Well, and that was, was like, that's oh. how it was with, with, with her, it, with my friend. Is yeah. that it was like, this is delightful. And then there would be a shift. There would be a change in the wind. And then somebody would be crying. Somebody would want to fight. Somebody, it was, it would, that would be when everything changes. It was like, there is the, you, you got to stop at some point. And that she was, she didn't have, she wasn't able, unable to stop was her thing. I have two friends that I've met within the last five years who don't drink anymore, mm. but they'll like do Molly twice a year. Mm. Or one of them does ketamine every once. And at first I was like, all right, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like none of my business, but what is that? That's not, you know, any psychologist to tell you, you can't be like that. Mm -hmm. And then now that I've known them for this amount of time and it's like, no, they actually can do that. It's like, okay, you learned what was going to kill you. And you went through that and now you're this, you know, whatever. That's none of my business or whatever. And my, anyway, my point is they're a lot of fun. It's like they figured out how to be like somehow in that. And, you know, that's not a recommendation to anyone out there fiending for a drink. Maybe I'll try Molly. Don't do that. But, uh, <laughs> but I think, uh, oftentimes with people like that, there's usually something specific that is like, 
uh, like it's the same reason why so many people who are sober out here are California sober because weed is yeah. the thing that they're addicted to. So it's like it'll help them sleep. They can use it for what you know what I'm saying? Like, I think that that's the other thing, too. If uppers is your thing, you eating an edible, a CBD edible to go to sleep. It's not going right. to it's not going to matter. Um, but I also know a lot of people that are sober that took that take ketamine treatments actively. And um, man, it, they seem like they're doing great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's the difference between drugs that you're doing to party and what the doctor gives you oftentimes is there's no difference. It's just where you get them. Yeah. <laughs> where you get them, how much you do them. Are you doing them at a concert right. or, or a right. festival? DJ, you got a story uh, like this, like what we're talking about? Do you watch a uh, witness a transformation? Oh yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it go all such which ways. I've seen some bitches, man, that you think uh, would be cool as hell sober, become the fucking worst person you've ever in your life. <laughs> yeah. you, you fucking Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah, it, it works all kind of different ways, man. And I had to tell you though, man, I don't really know about all that goddamn fucking doing the ketamine and rewiring yourself through fucking chemicals and stuff. I know I get it that when depression and stuff is a uh, is, is serious, but uh, once again, that's how they get you. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> that's how they get you. <laughs> I just gonna throw it out there. I'm not a hundred percent convinced on this whole this whole ketamine treatment. It's like you can change the neuroplasty in your in your brain cells by repetitive action. You know what I mean? Mm. You just got to find the course of action which will best lead you into this, you yeah, know, positive it, corrective behavior. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm not so I'm not 100%. I'm that this shit scares me, man. We'll so look at I think it's little, like Ozempic are, but for healing. Mm. So I think that the they're people, go ahead. I was going to say, we can get into Ozempic, but the people who are proponents, I think, of, of ketamine and mushroom therapy or whatever, psilocybin therapy, agree with what you just said completely, DJ. They just have recognized through brain patterns that these psychedelics uh, speed that up. Uh, you know, and then, then and you kind of got to get like into Ozempic, like, right, it's, well, a, it's, it's not a you believe in a cheat code? Mm -hmm. Are you anti-cheat code? You know, yeah. that you say, well, that's how they get you. I mean, yeah, maybe if you're going to Berkeley for your brain rewiring, but like, you know, I, do, I know guys who just are getting their ketamine from a dude named Phil, and I feel like no one's trying to get them, but maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, but I got that. It's it's scary. The whole the whole the whole using drugs to better yourself, especially it's like especially once it entered the manosphere. Same thing with like fucking with with fucking Ram Dass and all this fucking and you know crazy shit like that. I just feel like they were able to circuit wire people into becoming like hyper productive over consumers you know what i mean mm. like that was that was the psyop that eventually came and like using using these different these you, you know you, you just got to be real careful about what you let in there man because that brain's a computer you know fucking goddamn it's gonna put out what you put in and it's just it's wild man that's yeah. why i just watch alien shit and <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say, what have you been putting in it lately? Um, I think I think your argument's compelling. I think your argument's very compelling. I do. I think it's a double-edged sword, though, where it's like if we acknowledge that your input affects your output, then it's okay for people to start looking for different inputs. You know, um, I don't know. I did. To me, it's like anything that gives you a modicum of happiness. And then some sort of stable contentment so that you can be who you're supposed to be for yourself and your family. Yeah. Let it ride, dog. And if it gets out of hand, hopefully you'll have the um, serenity, I guess it's the right word, to realize it's getting out of hand and you need to change it. Yeah, man. Because it's, it's, just, it's just like, all right, my friend that I was just talking about, uh, he's taking Ozempic as a perfect example. Mm. And I was like, really? you're on that now. And he just looked at me and he goes, you know what I used to put in my body? And I'm like, you're right. You're right. We're in a good place. <laughs> That's right. 
right now. It's not a perfect place. It's a better place. Right. Yeah. I think it's, uh, again, it, it all goes back to as long as you're not doing it so much that you're losing just muscle mass and becoming this weird, like, flesh sack of bones i think that's fine but it goes the same thing with ketamine i think if you're doing it <laughs> with a therapist uh, somewhat not all the time you know what i mean i feel like uh, it's there's there's a moderation factor in all of this i agree with that i i guess the only thing i would say to sort of surmise what i was just saying is i i don't believe in my heart or brain that people who uh kick alcohol to just automatically start doing Molly twice a year. I'm just saying that I know people who did that and they seem okay and it seems to be working for them and it ain't none of my goddamn business. <laughs> yeah, that, oh man, it, it, it worked. I try I tried to do that and when when I was first getting off of uh of hard drugs and stuff, man, I tried to go like full on psychedelic. Mm. But then being an addict, it became like Oh well, I'm just gonna do it. You know what I'm saying? I did. Yeah. I did. I just totally fucked my my brain up. Uh, uh, even worse. Or and then also, it's also how you're in it, what you're re interacting with in in the culture and in your environment and stuff like mm -hmm. that has. A, I don't think I was in a good space to be doing that or in a good environment to be trying to do any of that anyway. You know, and I certainly wasn't settled in my heart, so. That's probably not. I'm sure that might it might help somebody, but I, I totally went the wrong. Uh, yeah, I I didn't mean to come across like I think it's helping people. I just think it's working. That's a different, yeah. very different yeah. Yeah. homeostasis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I, I, but um, also yeah. that the only thing that's only my issue with, with psychedelics as far as like uh, being addictive with it is like you gotta let your brain breathe in between. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it man. is too much oh, yeah. to do back to back, dude. I can't. I can't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I also, I also think there's like a almost a semantic or like a point of view thing where sometimes you start having conversations with people and you're kind of going, I don't know. I, I you know, I read that mushrooms can help brain plasticity and that can help you rewire some of your habits. You can get rid of some bad habits, mm -hmm. and they're hearing that and they're going it's going to fix me. So they go do it and it doesn't fix them. And it's like, well, that was never on the table. Yeah, what we yeah. were talking about was yeah. exercise, not you becoming Arnold Schwarzenegger. So yeah. like, you got to <laughs> like, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, Oh, damn it. I lost it. Fuck. I forgot what I was going to say. It's the, nah, never mind. <laughs> well, my bad <laughs> paradoxically dj's attitude towards these things is exactly why he refuses to be a cult leader mm -hmm. and why he is the best candidate we know of for a cult leader mm -hmm. <laughs> to pull the sweat the goats and yes. the beard and the looks and the nice shoulders <laughs> yeah um i i feel like those cheekbones and that attitude oh, we could make so much money, dude. We could we could really have we could have our own Hawaiian compound, man. Like just let me and Garmin tell you what to do for a year. Let us stop, dude. Yeah, because you need the first followers. You don't have a guru without a first follower. Let, and that is somebody say, that is trustworthy that goes, I know he sounds crazy, but hear him out. You never have I've a cult leader. Been doing that for years. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I, there's, I'm not, I'm not number one. I'm not dealing with any, with any uh, uh, kind of problems with people. You know nope. what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm just here to tell you how the government's trying to, to, you know, what I'm saying, steal your DNA so they can <laughs> put, create mass surveillance operations. That's it, dude. That's it. Producer Mark said yeah, we should start the Church of Gravy. Well, we already have the church of yeah. eat fruit and fuck, right? And, you know, Mark don't even know how deep this goes. Yeah, Mark, we, Mark we had a call before we had a podcast. We have are just like people who like comedy, <laughs> but nah, there are people looking for something, bro. <laughs> I don't. Uh, oh, man. I remembered what I was gonna say was the. Um, oh, yeah. oh wait, wait, sorry, producer Mark. What is? I can't read your scratch. Your chicken scratch. Oh, he said it's so easy to to form a five hundred one five hundred one three C. Um is uh, a lot of times you could tell 
people are just doing mushrooms. They're not doing the work that goes along with mushrooms. And that's right. the, that, that's the difference. It's, it's like, yeah, OK, and, you're just eating. You're yep. just eating to giggle and get high and, and laugh at animal videos yeah. or whatever the fuck you're or walking on the beach. But you also have to do the work that comes along with it. <laughs> which for me yeah. several times has been me locking myself in a dark closet and having conversations with myself that are incredibly difficult so i mean yeah i find i find mainly it's like the days afterwards especially if i'm going into one of those like wrapped and nestled into the bosom of the goddess and mm -hmm. fucking blue light shooting out of me and shit like that if, I, <laughs> if i'm hit, i mean if i'm hitting that fucking that level of goddamn being out there then it, it won't be like days sometimes even weeks to like a process mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and i'm just i'm so tender and fucking fragile that it's uh it's very i have to be very 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 cautious about yeah what you what let I in allow. yeah yeah even for myself even mm -hmm. the things that i let in for myself like this was this it's like was it that dude let's really seriously question you know what i'm saying these things that we find you know that uh, the things that we uncovered mm. or whatever but uh but you know what now i don't even like i smoke a, a bunch of weed but like uh that's mainly for for fun it's not even for any other things because i i enjoy it you know what i mean but fun it's, matters dude so much mm. i would have just as much fun without it and that I know that for a fact. It's like then not why, even. Hold on, then why are you doing it? Uh huh. Hold on, but then why are you doing it? Hey, do it here I got a lot of it. Too much of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think you know it's know because I mean? it's fun to be dumb sometimes, especially for people it that overthink. It's it, yeah, weed is mean. fun for people that overthink because it's fun to temporarily be dumb. It's the same kind of thing. Like, we're, we're, I mean, why do you think dumb people are always happier? It's it's nice to not have all the thoughts. And that is something that marijuana you know, definitely yeah. helps with. And you, like, surprise yourself. It's like, what is this jar of peanut butter doing in my toolbox? I was fucking fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you get to laugh at yourself for being dumb oh my god what am i doing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you gotta make yourself a later sandwich and like the fucking you think oh yeah man I, yes i love it i love it but it's not like anything to do it's like like some people say it's not medicinal for me it's uh it's just recreational mm -hmm. surely yeah you know what i'm saying but anyway drugs yeah. But you know, when when DJ's uh, our guru, Carmen, he's going to say things like, "And what is the word recreation? It's not recreation." <laughs> Come with me on a journey, everyone. <laughs> We're going to sell T-shirts that say that. Recreation, yeah, no recreation. Recreation, <laughs> yeah. Because fun is how we grow. <laughs> Who the fuck is it attracted to that? If somebody told me fun is how you become a better person, it's like if they said it smoothly, oh God, dude, I would have lost five years. I'd be like, this is what I've been waiting to hear my whole life. You're telling me I can get straight A's with the, the, the teacher in my brain and have fun? Mm -hmm. yeah. Sign me up, dog. <laughs> yeah. We got to go find this guy what... living in the woods. I think he would definitely help our cause. He liked fun too. See, that's, and that's what everybody thinks of when they think of communes. They think, that they, oh, this is just going to be fun. This is going to be money. Yeah. This is going to be. Oh, that was that's, what it no, was attracted you know to me. It's orgy drama is what it is. <laughs> it's orgy drama. It's this person, yeah. this person, and they're not doing their part. And this and this and this. It's orgy it's drama. CIA. <laughs> it's orgy drama on the documentaries about the ones that made it to a certain point. The rest of them, dude, it was chore drama, and they didn't last yeah. five months. <laughs> and there was no documentary because no one regrets anything except for the sunburn they got. <laughs> yeah, there's also the racist element. There's it's crazy how many fucking how many uh, uh, communes out there end up like just going straight like straight to racism after a while. It's mm. like it's it's crazy. That that that's just but but in some ways that's not their fault. That's because black people refuse to join their stupid fucking <laughs> group. 
After a year, they're like, you know what? I think black people are shitty. They're stuck up, dude. <laughs> Why don't they want to drink the Kool Aid with me? What the fuck? Why don't they want me to I thought they like Kool Aid, which is another racist thought I had. <laughs> they learned after Jonestown, didn't they? They was like, that's nope. what I'm saying. <laughs> Why don't this they want to work for me? There's got to be free. all black cults. And just like every other thing in Hollywood, Netflix is ignoring them. Show me the black cult documentary, dude. <laughs> yeah. No, there is one. It's called the, it's actually not too far from the uh, Jonestown one. It's, uh, I think it's uh, like the son of Israel, but it's like, it's not, not in America. America. Not in America. I want, dude, I want America. Got American black USA. cult. The three percenters. USA. <laughs> are, the three percenters are cultish, but they operate more like Scientology or like they operate more like a half religion, half cult. I want a cult commune. I want a commune cult, black cult documentary. Five percenters? Yes, five percenters. The three oh, percenters yeah. are a white supremacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like two percent off, but it's a big two percent. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's wild how it's three fifths. Like I don't even want to make it an appropriate <laughs> joke, but it is wild how it's <laughs> oh, 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 that uh, that uh, the children of Israel, the house of Israel, or whatever it is, though, are they black Israelites? Are they like a version of black Israelites? Sort of. All I know is that the dude like fucking stole a bunch of money from McDonald's. Hell uh, yeah, they, yeah like, dude. It's a rad story. It's a rad story. Dude. They're not great, by the way. They're not oh, I know. People, but the, the story is fucking super cool. Dude, every cult starts out sick. This mm -hmm. was the whole premise of the church eating fruit and fuck is mm -hmm. it's cool in the beginning, dude. You're <laughs> yeah. stealing money from McDonald's, you're eating yeah, fruit, you're having <laughs> sex with people in the woods. It's yeah, a good dude. time, man. Yep. And the stealing from McDonald's is so you don't have chore drama. Mm -hmm. That's where that comes in. We got to yes. steal a bunch of money from McDonald's and none of us have to do work. Everybody yeah. use the self checkout. Everybody yep. steal, and then we don't. Yeah. Then we don't have to. Then there is no chore drama. That's why there's no very few black cults. You got to start with crime, and they just can't fucking get away with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. Well, uh, see, now I'm back to do a cult. Like I just had to convince myself right there at the end. Because you just no. gotta bail. You just do the cult, and then after a few months, right when it's going perfectly, literally when you've just had the best day of your life, you're like, oh, it's time to walk away, kids. It's over. Cult disband. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's it. it. Maybe we could start several cults and then just jump to a new one every time right yeah. when it starts getting weird, you know? Yep. <laughs> I love like it. One of those old -timey, like one of those old dudes that used to be like a salesman where he'd be have like six different families what? around like, you just, yeah. do you like know a, what I mean? Had like six yeah. different oh, he's he got different last names. He's Jewish <laughs> yeah. when he's telling the Jewish people. He's Catholic when he's telling yeah. the Catholic people. Yeah. <laughs> Producer Mark said Most it's like out a, there a in cult Ponzi Mobile scheme. 88. Well, hi, him. Mm -hmm. What'd the, you say, Corbin? Producer Mark said like a like a cult Ponzi scheme. Like we just switch it up. Yeah. And the second yeah. somebody's like, I don't like that. She's been fu uh 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 no, we gotta go. We gotta move. Uh, yeah. It started once the yeah. drama begins. Yeah, dude. yeah. <laughs> like a, a sex cult Ponzi scam, a, a BDS MLM. <laughs> <laughs> we can do it. No, we can't. No, can't. Can't. We don't have the can't. heart for it. Even if we no. may have the brain power for it, I don't know if we have the personality for it, probably. We don't have the heart for it. Yeah. No, no. So the other no. genesis of the Eve and Fuck was me telling you during the pandemic. If I was a bad person, I'd start a cult. That would be the most lucrative and fun thing to do right now during this pandemic. I, we just don't, we don't have that. And maybe that's what we're missing, guys. If you're a bad evil? person and you listen yeah. to Gravy Baby <laughs> and you want to help us out, DM us. Yeah, DM us on uh, Instagram at Gravy Baby Pod. Or if you want to throw money at us, you still can at patreon.com slash Gravy Baby Pod. Um, I had something gravy, but it's nothing uh, cult related. Uh, well, it's time to switch topics. Let's be honest. Okay. <laughs> My friend Jackie has a house here, and she has a little vegetable garden. Sounds like a Dr. Dog song. Yeah. My friend Jackie. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> 
She uh, has a cute little vegetable garden in the back, which is kind of unheard of here. Um, and every summer, and th- what made me think of this is because um, DJ said a made her sandwich. She always, uh, she loves summer just because she grows a bunch of tomatoes and eats tomato sandwiches. And it brings her so yep. much joy. So they're incredible. She's like, it's about four weeks. I'm going to have like about four weeks of tomatoes. I'm going to have too many to be able to eat as many tomato sandwiches as I want. So she's always like, take some tomatoes. So then I took tomatoes and I cooked them down and I fucking made my own like pasta sauce, like from scratch, the whole thing, the oh, whole nine. No, 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 no. And dude, man, they, they, I think they shit, they shit on our generation, but I think we're just finding the joy in simplicity as opposed man. to being consumeristic cunts. I think that's really what it is. Mm-hmm. It was so good. It was so fucking man. delicious. Yeah. You know what I mean? That yes, was like a thing. My, my mom just went to my cousin's house in Florida and all they did was make pasta together. Just a big, huge fucking oh. mess making pasta together. They had a black, talk about fun. They had so much yeah. fun working together. Yeah. And not That's on something more fun though. than working 50 hours a week and refinancing three homes in Florida just so you could land on your ass at 55 yeah. and start over. Yeah. You're lazy. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> They're lazy. That sounds amazing. It was. It Both experiences amazing. were were great. I mean, obviously, I wasn't there for the pasta, but it. Uh, but I've always had a fun with that. Anytime you could just I want like, that okay. sauce. Yeah. Give me that sauce. It's so good, dude. It's on. It was. I was like. I. I'm not very. My mom's a brilliant. I would call her a chef. She. She would hate that. But because she never went to school, she's not formally trained. But my. My mom is a self-taught chef without question. She cooks a fuck a fuck ton of different. But I would like. I was like, Ma. I'm not gonna lie. I could throw it up there. I could throw it up there to compete. Yeah. It's fucking good. I, 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 but she was all yeah. hyped about it. She was like, fuck yeah, roast roast the tomatoes. Fucking get into it. I was all of it was like, dude, it was so good. And I think there's oh, there's so something rad. to be yeah. said. Cause for a while I was just like, why are people I see all these videos on the on the on the in the algorithm or whatever? All these people are just like, you why don't you just make your own mayo and all this other shit? And you're like, oh, because you don't want all this shit that they put in our food. So you could just make it yourself. It just takes a little bit more work. But guess what? Then you enjoy it even more because it's I fucking these are my eggs. My chicken shit these eggs out. And then I put them in a jar with some fucking lemon and whatever. And you boop, 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 boop. And and now I got rosemary mayo on my fucking sandwich on a bread that I made. Yeah, Yeah, it just all of it. It just is. It's just a string of dopamine. I fucking get it. And I'm on board. Do it. Garmin. What? Let me. uh, What do the kids say? Let me put you on game here. Okay. Um, <laughs> when you go to make your own mayonnaise, yes. and you should, look up a recipe for Japanese mayonnaise. Oh, you talking about like a Kewpie mayo? That kind? Yeah, you can do that, but I don't mean like the spicy Japanese mayonnaise. Mm. I just mean the way they make it. They leave the yolk in. <gasps> what? It's so much better. Really? Oh, I mean, to me. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if they leave all the yolk in. I can't remember. It's been a while. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It feels like it's like you use four egg whites and only one yolk, but mm-hmm. it's the yolk that do it. <laughs> I fucking, I'm, such, I'm such a dukes man. I don't know if I can ever fucking change. Like it's and it's everything about dukes mayonnaise. Dukes, from that's where I got my consistency. Mm. The consistency of it, the, the 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 obviously the flavor. It's not too. It's like it's the perfect mayonnaise. I just don't feel like I could ever like once it's good. I mean, sure, it'll be poison here in a few years, but yeah, for now, I love that. That's the one thing you still have faith in. You said a few years. That is the most hopeful thing <laughs> you said about a consumer product. Maybe in years. That's beautiful, dude. Look I at DJ like being Duke optimistic. I didn't know you still yeah. had it in you. Look at that. Dude's funny. Oh. Dude's got a solid two years, maybe even three. <laughs> oh, man. 
Well, if I you was find out how on. good it is, and they'll start putting all the other shit in it. So yeah. <laughs> I'm promoting bought. it, but I don't want everybody to go buy it. I don't. <laughs> it'll it'll get bought out by somebody, dude. That's exactly right. Yeah. And that's coming. Yeah, that's the point. Well, it already has been, I'm certain, at least twice. But a lot of times, used to, when a huge conglomerate bought something successful, they would just like fire two people, but keep everything else the same because they're like we all know how to do this so uh you two are fired and you're the boss now do it the same and it seems like something changed at some point where like i don't know what yeah. and I, I genuinely don't get it i don't understand how it leads to making money where they're like no no, no, no. we're firing everybody yeah it's very weird blowing up the plant yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Bulldoze in the city. Everything's yeah. got to come. The whole town's got to fucking be pouring out. <laughs> you know what it is? Hmm. You know what it is? Capitalism. Well, yes. But, it, but, but, but in my head, I'm like, but how is that? Where, how do you make money? Name recognition keeps you afloat for a certain number of years. You sell, basically, like if you have, if this is your, how many sales you got when it's good, you know if you make it shitty by spending half the money, you're still going to sell 90% for four years yeah and then you sell it right before the bottom drops out Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think greed is what ruins it usually because then it's like they probably use quality ingredients they probably use eggs that aren't fucking full of poison you know i'm saying they probably so it's so then you buy it and then you're like okay well this is costing too much to make now where we want to make more profits and then the law, the, then you just start, you know, you start cutting shit with water. You start fucking, that's why there's water in our butter now, bro. There's yeah, bakers all across the There's water in our meat too. Yeah. But fucking that's, wild. But to me, I would see that water in the meat's a perfect example where they make them, they put water in it and they blow it up and make it heavier so they can sell more with less. But to me, I'm going, but long term is going to ruin this great product. Is that not? company suicide why don't you care about that and it, it just kind of sparked in me if a brand is as strong as dukes they can make it shitty and ride most of that only certain people will know or be able to figure, tell. You know, switch immediately mm-hmm. so it's like uh man that's so genuinely like it just lacks any heart you know what i mean it just lacks any care for the wrong country for that buddy <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> no that's right there's literal plastic <laughs> in our food, bro. Yeah, they don't give a fuck. Plastic. <laughs> but yeah, I think I was hammer yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing a joke on stage where I go, I'm I'm not fat. These are all microplastics I've been collecting. <laughs> and then I go, I'm tr- like, cause now there there's like uh women are having kids and they have like trace amounts of plastic in them already. And I was like, I'm just <laughs> saving up so I can be the first bitch to birth a Barbie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. an all plastic baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to care if I abort this bitch. I tell you what. <laughs> that's, that's, I know you know this, but that's, let me give you a compliment. That's so extra funny because birth a Barbie and abort this bitch. That's, that's just a great a use of alliteration. the alliteration. Yeah. There. I do love an alliteration. I throw them in anywhere I can. I do love a. Da, 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 da. You have full WB there <laughs> on did. us, dude. <laughs> oh, so anyways, uh, no, then we made it like a nice little BLT with the tomato because I, I saved one tomato oh, to do a BLT. BLT should be the sandwich of the mouth. summer. Sh- sh- it should be it the is. sandwich of the summer. It is. Well, I feel like we're down here. It's a cheese and tomato sandwich, which is close. Mm-hmm. And let's be honest, my people don't need any more meat, so that's fine. <laughs> it's fair. It's fair. We do a lot of BLTs. We do a lot of BLTs. Hell yeah. We do a lot of, yeah, we do a lot. I can't buy bacon anymore. Andy will buy it every once in a while when she's craving it, and I will eat it. I'm not, like, full on head of my ass. But, dude, there was just, like, this time where I just, my algorithm was full of cute pig videos, and I still will eat pork. Do not misunderstand me, but I just won't buy it. That's just like that's where my line fell. I'm like, I'm just not buying. You pork treat pork anymore. like cocaine. Like I, I yep. won't buy it, but if a friend has some, I'll have a little taste. It's already here, dude. Like yeah, the little <laughs> kids in Colombia have already been beaten. I, they want me to have a good time. What good is white privilege if we're not exercising it, Carmen? <laughs> 
Oh man, I did. I uh, what? How I did it is I, I put. We have this ghost pepper honey that I got last time I was in Asheville. So I um, warmed it up and like you, I brushed. You're it. so slutty about food today. I'm Stop. sorry. I'm sorry. You asked this. This is like what brought me joy because I made like a dope ass. Sand. I made a BLT that you would pay seventeen dollars for in this city. Okay. And I'm right. curious. Right. I don't have it. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I smeared it with the ghost pepper honey. So it getting and then what and is, then I put a fuck ton of black pepper on it. So the black pepper would stick to it that's it so tell me more about ghost pepper honey what was the you just, you just like put ghost peppers in it and then wait a few months or like what are we doing here that i don't know i don't own these bees i don't it. know how, i did not process i bought it in nashville at one of those weird asheville well we could sell we could keep a shop open just selling feathers like one of those things it was just a yeah. shop <laughs> that sold honey <laughs> all of our asheville huh? people know what i'm talking it's about front for the coke you were just talking about i've done coke in asheville Actually, and i, I definitely know that better. honey shop was involved <laughs> But it was like a little shop and all they did was sell honey and they had their own bees and they all they made it. So they had like so I bought like a three pack. They had like a lavender, uh, a lavender honey. They had um, a chai honey. They had a ghost pepper honey and the fucking ghost. And they have all of them there so you could try them all. I was there with Bobby, not my Bobby, but our Bobby. Yeah, um, Bobby. When I went when we went down to Silva and so. Yeah. So we went to Asheville and we went to this honey shop and um and they had all different kinds of rosemary honey like i was honestly i just didn't know you could do that much with fucking honey if i'm being honest you know but they yeah. had like they had that beeswax soap and their they made their own beeswax lip shit and all that other so they were using all the stuff but um the ghost pepper when i was like oh this this going to be good i was like cuz bobby likes to drizzle uh hot hot honey on is like um you know when you get like tendies or something like that dip a little hot honey in there so i was like this will be dope for that because he puts hot honey on his fucking pizza sometimes the man's weird but whatever but i'm just saying no, dude no no nah, he did he did honey <laughs> on pizza <laughs> no you're like Andy no no no, no. we that. like it yeah and he turned me on the honey on pizza there's oh, a, yeah. there's oh, a yeah. store there's a place out there carmen you it might deliver to you fire Ooh, i gotta ask andy um they have a they call it the honey bear mm. it is one of the three best pieces of pizza i've ever put in. <laughs> okay i'll tell him tell bobby he's gonna have to add honey to it because they started cutting back i mm. just, everything starts it's sucks Dukes now all I don't over know. again <laughs> <laughs> well i enjoyed today i needed it <laughs> well good uh, i had a wonderful time talking to both of you as always yeah man um let me tell you a thing that hits for me before we go that okay. didn't used to hit when someone's like trying to manipulate you in a way that's like not a big deal mm -hmm. but it's like you think i'm dumb that used to make me so mad like i'm like i don't even care if we do the thing just like what is this like whole web you've spun just so you don't have to say i don't want to do it and for some reason, in the last three years, I'm like, yeah, dance, you little monkey. I just play stupid. <laughs> what do you mean? Is everything okay? Oh, that sounds intense. Can you tell me what I just fucking, yeah. I'm well, going to make you say you don't want to do it or make up a better lie. Yeah. I think there's something to be said about once you learn, it's, I think, I guess you could compare it to stand-up. Once you learn all the tricks, then you could see it. And then it becomes less upsetting and because you can see it easily. And then you're like, man, <laughs> why are you dancing? Yeah. What are you doing? And uh, Yeah, but that's yeah. also the pain with that for me is when somebody's like, I'm like, that ain't even a good trick. And sure. yeah, look, this is what people want. I guess I'm stupid then. Um, all right, I got to go. You know, I got to do another one. I know. <laughs> guys, do you have anything you guys want to plug? Okay. I'm, my bug. Make sure, yeah. Make sure y'all buy extra beans. Get extra beans. Get you some extra coffee. <laughs> Just put it up, man. When you go out, you and, and listen, man, and that kind of like the end of the world. It's just you might your area might not be fun going outside. You know, going out there might be shit going on. Mm. You got you some coffee. You got you some 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 dry creamer. You know stuff like that. You just pick, throw it up, throw it in the basket next time you're in the. It in the lasts a long store. time. Just, long shelf eating. life stuff. Yeah, just grab yeah, some long dude. shelf life stuff. If you don't need it, you don't need it. But it might come a time where you just like fuck all of that's going on out there. You know what I'm saying? And just I don't want to be a leader. 
But I draw good. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Feels like we're starting it. Feels like we're circling back to eating some fruit. <laughs> Fruit that'll last a long time. So if you're going to buy fruit, buy apples. They have long shelf life. Uh, <laughs> dried yeah. fruits. Get you some dried fruits. Dried fruits. It's <laughs> just a bag. Just throw it in there. You got now till November. Okay. <laughs> you got now till November. Your city might be, you know, you don't know what's going on. So <laughs> go ahead. There will absolutely be some violence in November. I don't think it'll be a big deal. I don't think people give a shit about Donald Trump anymore. No one's even talking about how you got almost got murked. It's over. Even here, where I live, no one's talking about it anymore. It's yeah. crazy. You know why? You know why? Because a black lady might be party. president. Huh? Because a black lady might be president. Yeah, well, that that takes over it, but, but also because they can't point their finger at anybody. The only person that they can point their finger out, they can say, do you know? It was, and that was it. If, it had, if there was no other nothing, mm-hmm. it was all them. A gun that they that we tried to fucking ban, that, that was trying to ban a dude uh, who was a registered Republican who had a fucking YouTuber's gun shirt on. Like, there was no, there was no one else to blame. Yeah, there's no, it's they don't have like, anybody to vilify. It's no almost like, mm-hmm. it's almost like someone really smart planned it. Okay, that's it. I yeah. It. And I, I'm <laughs> all right. Bye, right, guys. <laughs> I'll be Bye. in uh, Milwaukee, uh, ladies and gentlemen, at uh, the uh, comedy uh, Laughing Tap. Sorry, Laughing Tap, August 9th and 10th. Uh, please come and see me. And then in September, I will be in uh, Minneapolis, in St. Paul, um, and Rochester, Minnesota. Uh, CarmenMorales.com for all of your Carmen Morales needs. Please come out and see me. Or if you guys know people in those cities, please come out and see me. Uh, tell them to come out and see me. I'll also be in Janesville, um, Wisconsin in October. Yeah, October 25, 26. So please come out and, and see me again. If you guys know people in those areas, uh, please let a bitch know because I'm doing door deals for the first time and I'm fucking terrified. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. <laughs> Thank you guys yeah. so much for listening. Um, make sure you guys uh, thank you so much for the people who share our little clippies. We appreciate it. Uh, keep doing that. Um, I'm going to try to see if I can get some merch made since everybody loved. If you uh, don't want no pew pew, um, don't be throwing that flim flam. I'm going to try to get something made so you guys can. Because <laughs> everybody uh, seemed to really enjoy that. So I'm going to try to make that happen. Um, welcome to all the people who joined the Discord. We loved it. I love that for some reason, after I was like, you guys could fuck in the Discord if you want to, then a whole bunch of people started showing up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but welcome. Uh, I love it. Uh, I love you guys. Join the Patreon, patreon.com slash gravybabypod. You guys are wonderful. Enjoy uh, the rest of your week. We love you. Bye. You could stick a whole ribeye in one of your back pockets. <laughs> like.